Welcome back. You are tuning in to Treasure Nation. My pleasure to have with us here today former defense minister and finance minister, post war government of Iraq, uh, Ali uh, Alawi. Ali, welcome to Treasure Nation. How are you today? How are you, Kurt? Thank you. Very good. Thanks for being with us today. Book author, The Crises of Islamic Civilization, by the way, too, folks. Um, Mr. Alawi, is, is Islam inherently opposed to modern societies, much like you would see in the United States or even Europe? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, it's, it's not that Islam is against uh, modernity. It's against various aspects uh, of modernity which seem to uh, reject the uh, the presence, as it were, uh, of the divine or the sacred in the outer world. Uh, Islam wants to see the uh, evidence, as it were, of the ethical reality of uh, of the unseen in the outer world. And if post-modernity rejects uh, that, I think then Islam cannot really fit into the uh, shoes, as it were, of, uh, of modernity without recognizing that there is a place for the sacred. Sure. I mean, is, is, there a con- I mean, is there a conflict between... There, there has to be some type of conflict there to how can they... How can is, is Islam, uh, the follow Islam, find more information on what's out there as far as the societies are concerned if there's certain things that restrict them from getting that type of information, if they're coherent with it? Well, I think Islam, as I said, is not really uh, uh, in, I mean, constant enmity with modernity. Right. It's a different perspective on what are the yeah. uh, values uh, that should be uh, projected in the outer world. And when these values are not seen to be given enough credence, then nice. obviously Islam tends to have a different, a different perspective on things. But it's not necessarily against the, uh, right. the values, say, of a... Of a uh, uh, of Western civilizations, it's not against uh, representative government. It's not against uh, outer justice. It's not against fairness and balance. It just looks at it from a somewhat different perspective than what uh, people are used to in the postmodern world. Sure, sure. All right. Now, can Islamic uh, spirituality be separated from the public sphere, or or should it be separated? Uh, I don't think it can be separated. If you want to create an Islamic outer world, if you that doesn't mean that you can't have an, uh, an outer world that is not really inflected by, uh, by Islamic principles. But that, what happens is that Islam retreats then into the private sphere, and there's a clear separation between uh, the outer secular world and the private world. Right. But I don't think that you can create a civilization that you can call Islamic if that aspect of it is, is, uh, uh, is not taken into account. Right, all right. So, can Sharia, so often condemned as inhumane in the West, often, uh, does it offer a just and legitimate legal system for Muslims? Yes, it did. I mean, for nearly 1,400 years, the Sharia was the, was the law of the Muslim world. And it was yeah. the law by which people organized their lives uh, in all aspects, civil, criminal, uh, commercial, and family law. But it's the retreat of the Sharia also in the face of, uh, modern canons of uh, of law that that is part of the problem. The Sharia itself is, is really neutral in terms of whether it is a better system or a uh, less effective system than modern canons of law. It is just a system that has been designed for, by, and of Muslims, uh, and it, in many ways it has the same objectives as Western legal systems. Unfortunately, it's being caricatured now as uh, only to do with prohibitions and the uh, covering up of women and uh, right. uh, harsh, uh, harsh treatment of criminals is and so on. But this is only an insignificant or a very small aspect of the Sharia. Otherwise, it's been a system that has, uh, by and large, proved resilient and useful for Muslims. Well, I was going to say, are we only just, is the West, and in, including Europe, are we just seeing the, 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 the negative side of Sharia? I mean, they're obviously, as being as around as long as it has been, Woven into yes, the I mean, there's no doubt about it. And also, I think, uh, by and large, people don't seem to have yeah. long-term memory. I mean, it's only <laughs> right. years that France banned uh, execution by guillotine. Right. Uh, it only happened in 1975. Now, you can't really say that all the uh, advances, as it were, in human rights, right. and women's rights, and so on, sure. uh, were there in the Western experience until really quite recently. Yeah. So I think to try to load onto Islam all of the uh, its inability to catch up with the most uh, sort of cutting edge uh, perspectives on rights and so on yeah. is really not quite fair. But yeah, what would be a good? Large, what would does have a, a a balanced and 
fair legal system. What would be a good example of that? Well, for example, uh, uh, we, we talk about inheritance uh, and how women's rights are uh, men inherit twice as much as women. But under Islamic law, a woman's property uh, is her own. Her husband is not really entitled to it. I see. So in that case, women, women are privileged over men in terms of disposition of their own properties. But in, in, uh, in inheritance, they get half the share. So it's not as, it's not as black and white as uh, made out to be. Yeah. It's a very nuanced and quite a, a complex uh, legal system that in some cases has equivalent rulings that, uh, that uh, exist in most of the Western countries. Sure. Do you see, and I know there's certain, uh, the, as far as the Sharia is concerned, there's a community out in California that would like to have Sharia on the civil level. Do you think that's entirely possible, or should it be? Well, I think, uh, you know, in some cases, if you look at it, uh, there is a form of Sharia law already functioning in the United States. For example, uh, marriage in Islam is really a contract. It's a contractual arrangement. There's nothing sort of sacred about it. Yeah. And if you look at, uh, say, California uh, uh, marriage laws, mm -hmm. they're not that different in terms of their structure from, uh, from contract law. So Sharia law is basically a law of contracts. It is to do with the two parties agreeing on certain ways of doing their business or conducting their relationships. Right. And these accumulate over time. But what is the problem now is that certain uh, radical or very uh, fundamental types are uh, taking Sharia as a very detailed, incredibly detailed set of rulings, while in reality it's a very flexible and a very accommodating system. So if you look at the fundamental uh, or fundamentalist view of the Sharia, then I agree with this critics that it, it tends to be very, very restrictive. Yeah. But if you look at it from its historic evolution, it hasn't been that at all. Yeah. I learned something in, in your book today. It's a fantastic book, by the way. The name of it, folks, is The Crisis of Islamic Civilization. That, uh, uh, given Islam's ban on interest, and I didn't know there was a ban, I didn't know you couldn't uh, have interest, uh, is a truly Islamic economy possible without having interest? on loans, yes. things of that nature, banking, e-commerce. Well, I mean, if you look at it, most of, most of the pre-modern economies had, uh, had a ban on interest, too. I mean, the Catholic or the Church had a ban on interest until very recent times, until the Reformation. So it's not yeah. something that is unique to Islam. All the, yeah. uh, most of the world's religious traditions have a problem with interest. Yeah. Uh, what Islam says is that money in and of itself does not have a right to earn a return. The, what what the right to earn a return comes from people taking risks and people uh, entering into uh, risk-making or risk-taking uh, ventures, entrepreneurship. So yeah. Islam privileges risk-sharing rather than allowing idle capital to earn a return simply for being there. So it's kind of like... So you, can, you can have an economy based on that, I believe, yes. All right, it's just capitalism without interest, right? Yes, in, in many ways, Islam also privileges private enterprises. It's sure. very, very uh, supportive of, uh, of business and, and, uh, and uh, free enterprise. But in, when, when it comes to uh, people expecting a return simply because they own capital, yeah. uh, that is seen, it's seen to be problematic. Uh, right, so. right. We've got about a minute left. Um, how do Islamic banking institutions, how do they meet the uh, growing economic needs of Muslims? Well, there are a growing part of the scene, there's no doubt about it. And it's, it's really by doing things like leasing, by doing things like renting, by risk sharing, yeah. by profit participation. This is the way in which uh, most Islamic banks conduct their business. And people seem to be uh, willing to take a, 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 to place their funds and their deposits with these institutions. They've now grown to be quite significant factors in the Islamic world and also internationally. Okay. All right. Where can we get a copy of the Crises of Islamic Civilization today? Barnes and Noble book, major bookstores. I think so. Yes, it's uh, it's at Borders and Barnes and Noble, and also on Amazon.com. So. All right. Today we have uh, Ali Alawi, a former Minister of Defense of Iraq, Minister of Finance. We do, um, and that's in the post-war government, by the way, folks. Ali, uh, Mr. Alawi, we do appreciate your time here on Traders Nation. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Get a copy today. Absolutely fascinating book. The Crises of Islamic Civilization. Head out to Barnes & Noble, uh, Amazon.com, your favorite bookstore. Get a copy today. You are tuned in to Nation. We'll be right back.